In today's video, I show you how to install and configure Kapower. Kapower is a software to build and manage a comic book library, fitting in the R suite of software. Let's get Kapower set up. Before we get started, if you haven't joined our Discord server yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. On to Kapower. If you don't already have a comic folder, we'll need to create that first. I already have one, but let me show you how to create one. I'm gonna to browse to your server. Since I'm using the trash guide structure, I'm gonna go under data and then under media, and I've created comics in there. And to follow the same trash guide structure, we're gonna do the same thing under torrents. We'll create one here as well. New folder comics, and we'll go back one more. We'll go to Usenet and under complete. We're going to create one here as well. New folder comics. And that's all you need to do. And if you already have comics, then you can just go back to your media folder, data, media, comics, and then just copy the different you know comics that you have already in there. Now let's go into installation. We're going to go over to our apps tab. And in the search box, we're going to put in Kapower. K-A-P-O-W-A-R-R. -R. We'll find it. It's the only one there. We're going to hit install. I'm going to change the network type from the bridge to our alien proxy network just so it's all the media stuffs on one network and then downloads and completed and the database and pretty much everything else i'm gonna leave alone the web ui we'll check that port in a moment but just let me tell you that on the downloads and the completed option here i had tried on several attempts to get it to be something different you know to really fit into the trash guide structure it just wouldn't work i mean i got it to take it one time but i went back later on and it was gone and we'll talk about some of that later on too. But let me let me say this. If you do change these and you have success, please, please reach out. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you did because I'd love to change this to something else. So let's check that port now. Let's scroll down to show Docker allocations. We're going to find the web UI port. Double click on it. Control F. Shows two. Those two right there. So port's clear. If you need to change yours because it's in use somewhere down here, then just go ahead and you know increment it one or something until you find something that's good. Done with that option, I can close that search field. I'm gonna minimize the Docker allocations and then I'm gonna hit apply. And while that's installing, why don't you come join us on Discord? I'll leave a link in the description. All right, that's done. Go ahead and hit done. That was a real quick install. Now let's head over to our Docker tab. First thing as always, we're gonna find Kapower here. Go over and turn on auto start. Then we're gonna click on the icon for Kapower and do web UI. Now that we've got it installed, if you're getting some value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe while you're down there. It really helps the channel out and doesn't cost you anything. Now, before we get into the setup here, I want to let you know that while Kapower looks nice and seems to function, I found several little things that are just kind of annoying. This is the first full release of Kapower, and there are several issues that are being worked on, and I'm sure that as time goes by, Kapower will get more and more polished. But right now, it's just not quite perfect. I'll point out some of these as we move through the setup. So let's jump over to settings on the left-hand side. Then we're gonna to go to media management. Rename downloaded files, we want that enabled. And you'll see that each option here, the folder volume naming scheme is listed there. And below each one of these, it kind of explains each thing and what they do. I think the default is fine, but if you wanna change it, that's where you change it at. I'm gonna scroll down to converting now. And I like to convert downloaded files and extract archives covering multiple issues. So if you've got an archive, it's gonna extract it for you. And then the format preference, I like the CBR option. So we're going to select that and we're going to go up to the top and hit save. And this is one of those issues that I, I found that's kind of just weird that if you don't save quick enough, the page will refresh and then all your changes have just disappeared. They all go away. I timed it and I think uh, it was like 45 seconds when it was refreshing. Now I installed it on two different servers, my actual production server and my demo server here. And I had the same exact results every 45 seconds or so. It would just refresh and then the page would go away. But it doesn't seem to be doing that today, so I have no idea. It's weird. The other thing I noticed, too, is that is when you click Save, do, do you see anything happening? Do you see the icon change, change color for a second, any pop-up message? There's no indication that it's actually saving. So I think that's something that they could uh, really add on and make it just that little bit better by just adding some kind of indication that it's actually doing what you're telling it to do. So if yours has the issue where you know, you're know you in the midst of something and it refreshes and everything goes away, then what you're going to do is just select the options real quick, do whatever you got to do and then hit save. And they have to go back and, you know, add the next thing. So if you get two check marks done and hit save and then come back and do the format preference later and hit save, 
that's what I had to do on the first two setups. And you kind of notice when it does that because when it refreshes, it jumps right back to the top. So you'll know if it does it. But for some odd reason, it's not doing it today. Maybe they fixed it. All right, down to root folders. This is where I was having all kinds of issues attempting to map my own data location. I got it to work once, but upon coming back later, it was just gone. It was just removed from there. So after lots of fighting with it, trial and error, I just went with its defaults and it seems to be holding that fine. So the container's default is slash content, then click add over on the right. The other interesting thing here to note is that, well, let's just attempt to add another one here. There's no browse option, so you can't really see the folder structure at all. And I think that might be part of the problem. But, you know, I've done other things. Like when I mapped it right to data, put that in there. It just, yeah, doesn't exist. Doesn't matter what I put in there, didn't exist. Tried all kinds of stuff. Like I said, if you figured out, let me know. All right, so once you get your content root folder there, go ahead and hit save. All right, now we're going to go to download. And here's another location that I was not able to modify at all. So the download directory here, app slash temp downloads, that's what it is by default, and it seems to work, so I'm going to leave it alone. And for seeding handling here, the options here are complete or copy. That's how it's going to handle the, the seeding of a file, of a torrent file, after it's been downloaded. Here it says that it'll either wait until it has completed seeding and then move the files, or it'll copy the files and then delete the original when seeding is finished. And then you can have it complete deleted torrents. Usually I like to have all this handled by my torrent clients, but something else we'll get to here in a moment here, but it doesn't really have that option. So I'll just leave it on copy. We'll leave delete completed torrents checked. We'll scroll down. Service preferences. We've got Mega, MediaFire, WeTransfer, Pixel Drain, Get Comics, and Get Comics Torrent. And all you can do here is just change the order of these. I'm just leaving it all at defaults. On the left here, down on Download Clients, the built-in clients are Mega, MediaFire, you know, the same ones we just read off. So each one of these, other than Mega, pretty much say the exact same thing. MediaFire is a cloud storage service, which Compower can download files from. Same thing. Same thing. They're all the same, except Mega. Mega is a little different. Basically the same, but if you have a Mega account, you can put in your email address and your password for the account, and then it gets you past the five gig limit per day. So you can get you know, more download capabilities. I don't have the account, so I'm just going to cancel out of there. And then Torrent Clients. It's probably a good time to point out that there is only Qubit Torrent support. There's no Deluge support. There's no Usenet client support. There's no not even an ability to add indexers. So it, it's definitely got some work to go. If you're on Qubit, then you can just click on the Qubit option there, give it a name. We'll just call it, you know, Qubit. So for the base URL, you put in that information real quick. And if yours is refreshing constantly, then you gotta be quick. Colon, and then the port number for it is, I believe, 8080. Then your username for your Qubit torrent site. And I think mine was demo and my super secret password. And hit test. And if yours is refreshed before you were able to get it in there, then you got to put it back in there real quick. And for the title, I just put in random junk real quick. The URL I had already had in my clipboard, so I just pasted it in there real quick. Just put in the name and you know password, and then hit save. And then I went back into it, and I changed the name, and then hit save, and you know, just did it to get everything correct. But like I said, it's working now. All right, hit add, and that sets up the torrent client. So let's jump down to general. The only thing we're really concerned with here is the security. So let's put in a login password. We'll do super secret again, and then you'd save at this point. Then the Comic Vine, we're going to go grab that. So if you have an account with Comic Vine, you just click on the link here, Comic Vine API. It goes out, you log in. If you don't have an account, you sign up. I already have an account, my personal one. So let me grab that real quick and I'll paste that in. The link for the Comic Vine is here, but I'll leave a link in the description too. All right, jump down to theme. I'm going to change mine to dark and then save. Now let's go search for some comics. Let's go up to volumes and then click add volume. And I'm going to search for Stargate and I'm going to choose Stargate Universe. It's going to ask which root folder you want to go into, which we have the content one only. So I'm going to put it there. Folder, monitor all of them. State, automatic. Start searching for missing volumes. Click on there and you hit add volume. I don't want it to really download anything, so I'm going to leave it alone and just hit add volume. Now if we go up to volumes, you'll see it's listed here. If you go into it, it'll show you the different you know volumes that it's got. Click on it, tells you the you know description, the same stuff that all the other R platforms do. We'll get out of here and let's go add in our existing comics that we've already got in our library. So to do that, we're going to go to library import, hit scan. And you'll see everything that's found in the library, which this Frank Miller one, I'm not going to choose. But pretty much everything else, Stargate SG-1, POW 1, 2, and 3, those matched up correctly. Spider-Man series, those all look right. Once you're happy with your selection, you can hit import. 
Now, if we go back to our volumes, you should see all of them listed there. Yep, there's the Stargate SG-1. It's got those three volumes listed. You can click onto it, read about that volume, and the info on it, the files involved with it. You can rename it if you'd like. Going back to volumes, we can go to the Spider-Man one. Same thing, how much space it's taking up. We'll go back to our Stargate one. And let me show you something else here. You've got the option to do, you know, scan and refresh. It'll go out and refresh the library to see if there's any new, you know, volumes downloaded. If it's got anything new, then they'd show up. So any volumes that you've got monitored, you can have the option to search for them. You can also do a manual search. This is an automated search. So this little icon here is a little bookmark thing. When it's lit up like that, it means it's being monitored. If it's not, then it's not monitored. You can do the complete series here, or you can do each individual volume, however you'd like it. Hit the search. It's going to go out and search for it. Manual search. It's going to go out and look, find your results. And then preview rename. It allows you to rename the files to whatever it thinks it should be. It just kind of cleans it up. It gives them all the proper names. Like here, instead of being POW one of three, it just changed that order a little bit. And it's volume one, issue one. Hit rename. And it does it that quick. Convert options, general files. You can edit the information on it. If you don't want it monitored, you can change that. Different root folder. You know, the normal, normal R stuff. And if you're done with the series and you don't want it, you can just use the delete option and get rid of it. That kind of covers uh, Kapower itself. So now that it's set up, let's talk about the future of Kapower. Over on Kapower's GitHub page, under the Issues tab, you'll see that there are a number of noted issues. Some are quite old too, but there's also been a lot that have been resolved. So I'll leave that up to you to decide if that's good or bad. You see there's 29 open, there's 127 closed. If you look down through the list here, this was opened last week. You know, we can scroll all the way down here. This was opened June 6th of 2023. So, you know, a year and a half ago. Down here, it does say that torrent index support is something they're working on. And then also Usenet support for downloading as well. So that would be a, a definite good thing for it. If you jump over to the projects tab, you can look at their plans. You can see all the stuff that's been completed. You can see what's in testing, what's currently in progress, what's being handled soon, and then their to-do list. So it's, it's kind of the roadmap of what they're looking to do. And I'll leave links to both of these in the description so that you can check them out on your own. I think that Kapower has a lot of promise. It'll be great. But right now, it, while it works, it's just a little clunky. That whole refresh issue that I was having uh, seems to be resolved. I don't know if it's just a better day for it or whatever, but that was, that was definitely a, a big problem. Fix that and then add in support for indexers and Deluge client and uh, other Usenet support. And I think it'll be a fantastic R to add to your media stack. So should you install Kapower? I say yes, but do expect to have some issues and know that it's still under development. I think that it's got a lot of potential though.